Hi everyone, in this video we have a very exciting topic that is self-attention with relative positional embedding or relative self-attention for short. This is part of our transformer series, so we will see the differences between relative and absolute position embedding and then we will cover two algorithms for incorporating relative embedding in self-attention. If you recall from the transformer architecture, we have the position embedding denoted as PE that is added to the token embeddings for both the encoder and decoder. As we have already discussed, these position embeddings are based on the sine and cosine functions. So transformer uses two functions for the odd and even positions as shown here. The heat map displayed here shows how these embeddings look like. These sinusoidal-based embeddings help the model to generalize to unseen sequence length. So why we need relative embedding? Relative position embeddings allows the model to focus on the relative positions of words rather than their absolute position in the sequence. This means the model can learn the context or the relationship between the words more effectively. Besides that, relative embedding can provide a form of translation invariance, which results in improving the model's robustness and performance. Also, in some applications, such as modeling music, the relative timing between notes or beats is very important. Now let's see two approaches for relative self-attention. We will start by this paper titled Self-Attention with Relative Positional Representation. First, we need to understand how relative position is different from absolute position. When we have absolute positions with a sequence of length L, the absolute positions form a vector that goes from 0 to L-1, as shown here. But with relative positions, we care about the distances between these indices. So we deal with pairs of indices I and J, and the relative positions of I and J is R equals j minus i, which could be positive or negative. And now these relative positions form an L by L matrix rather than a vector. Let's look at an example relative position matrix. If the sequence length L equals 10, we can compute Rij equals j minus i for all i and j combination pairs, which results in this 10 by 10 matrix. Notice that the diagonal of this matrix is zero, since the diagonal refers to the same position, so i equals j, and therefore r equals zero. Now, assume we have already defined a fixed size embedding layer. In order to use these relative positions for embedding lookup, first we need to clip these relative positions. We can define a max clip length that matches with the fixed size of our embedding layer. For this example, we assume the clip length is 7, so that means all the relative positions greater than 7 and less than negative 7 are clipped to 7. And at this point, we can use embedding lookup for these relative positions, which will give us a three-dimensional tensor R of size L by L by the representation dimension D. So now, let's see how we can incorporate this into the self-attention equation. In the original scaled dot product attention in vector form, shown in the left, we first compute the dot product between vectors qi and kj, and then normalize this as the exp of uij divided by the sum of all uils. Finally, the attention is given as the product of normalized attention weights multiplied by v. Now, for relative self-attention, we add an extra term in uij. So besides the dot product qi transpose kj, as in the standard attention score, we also have qi transpose rij, where capital rij is the embedding vector for the relative position between i and j. In matrix form, we can separate the standard attention score qk transpose and the relative attention score 
Q-bar or transpose. The shapes of these tensors are as follows. Q, K, and V are two-dimensional tensors of size L by D, but the bold matrices Q bar and R have three dimensions. Tensor R has size L by L by D, and in order for matrix multiplication of Q and R, we have to reshape Q to make it a three-dimensional tensor as well. So Q bar has size L by 1 by D. Then Q bar R transpose will have the dimensionality L by 1 by L, so we have to squeeze out the middle dimension to get L by L, so that it will be compatible to be added to the standard attention scores. Our second approach is from this paper Music Transformer, which tries to reduce the memory complexity of relative self-attention. So let's see how it works. As we saw in the previous approach, instantiating the three-dimensional tensor R is memory intensive because its memory complexity is big O of L squared D. This new algorithm, however, computes the relative attention scores without instantiating tensor R, and thereby the memory complexity is reduced to linear with respect to L. In this approach, rather than instantiating the embedding tensor R for all pairwise positions, they propose an algorithm where the relative attention scores are computed in two steps. In step 1, we can directly multiply matrix Q with the embedding matrix E, so that results in an L by L tensor. Then in step 2, we adjust the product QE transpose to account for the relative positions. They call this process a skewing algorithm, which reorders the columns according to this equation j equals r minus l minus 1 plus i. The proposed skewing algorithm is shown in this diagram from the paper. But let's visualize the steps of the skewing algorithm. For this visualization, we assume we have this 7 by 7 matrix from QE transpose, where the columns indicate the relative position from r equals minus l plus 1 to 0 and each color corresponds to a specific R value. Note that in reality, the top left corner of the matrix could be masked, but for this visualization, we want to use colors for relative position only. First, we pad the matrix by a column vector on its left side, so we get L by L plus one matrix. Then we reshape this to L plus one times L matrix, using row major ordering. So that is taking the elements from the top row and putting them into their respective position as is being shown here. And at the end, we discard the first row and what is left is this L by L matrix. Notice that the column indicated by R equals zero in the left is now in the diagonal of the matrix in the right, because the diagonal refers to i equals j, and therefore r is 0. So that brings us to the end of this video. In this video, we covered relative self-attention and saw how to incorporate relative position embeddings into self-attention. Also looked into a more memory-efficient approach for relative self-attention. I hope that you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for more videos from our channel. Thanks for watching.